This is Worthington Forest Memorial located at Hill 140 between Conn and Falaise. This memorial honors those who were lost from the British Columbia Regiment, which consisted of tanks, and those from the Algonquin Infantry Regiment of Ontario. Together, they formed Worthington Force, led by Lieutenant Colonel Don Worthington. During the second phase of Operation Total Eyes, Worthington Force set out to capture Hill 195, but through the darkness of night and the fog of war, they reached Hill 140 instead. They went off course and ended up right in the middle of the German army. By morning of August 9th, the Canadians were encircled by Panzer and Tiger tanks and almost completely eliminated. 48 of 52 tanks belonging to the British Columbia Regiment were knocked out and the regiment suffered 133 casualties, of whom 40 were killed in action, including Lieutenant Colonel Don Worthington. The Algonquin Infantry suffered similar losses, with 43 men killed in action out of the 128 casualties, while the majority of the remaining force became prisoners of war. Along with Worthington Force, a Ford Observation Officer serving with the 23rd Field Regiment, Captain Jack Donahue and his four gunners, George Moore, Jack Reardon, Joe Chason and Lorne Muntz took a direct hit to their tank, knocking it out of commission. Captain Donahue ordered his men back to the regiment while he stayed behind to destroy critical maps and information. George Moore and Joe Chason were captured for a brief while but freed by some of the remaining infantry. The four gunners eventually made it back to the regiment after a harrowing trip by foot. After staying behind, Captain Donahue became a prisoner of war. It was only by late afternoon that a charge of the 1st Polish Armored Division reached the remaining survivors of Worthington Force, allowing them to return to Allied lines. The grounds at Worthington Force Memorial are considered sacred grounds, and the soldiers who fought against one of the most overwhelming odds will always be remembered for their sacrifice. On August 13, 1944, the recce and digging parties from the 23rd Field Regiment moved here to Rennie Mesnil to prepare for a night occupation for the next day's attack. For the soldiers of the 1st Canadian Army, August 14th will always be remembered as Operation Tractable. With the intentions of breaking through the German defence line between Quisnay Woods and Potony, along the River Laison, to the south bank and striking on to Falaise. Canadians, British and Polish divisions were now well astride the Falaise Road. And Falaise was to become the anvil of which the German armor would be cracked. Meanwhile, the Americans were racing east to form one of the sides of the famous Normandy Pocket. after the attack commenced and from the view of our slit trenches, we watched another one of the tragic episodes unfold, which almost broke up the new offensive. Wave upon wave of heavy bombers came floating over in the bright afternoon sunlight, beautiful glistening machines which proceeded to dump thousands of bombs far short of their target. Fortunately, it was the rear areas which were subjected to the bombing, which went on for what seemed to be more than an hour. Bombardier Edward Mickey Robinson, serving with the 23rd Field Regiment, recalls his experience. They flew right on over, the bomb bay doors open and everything. And I said, it scared the pants out of everybody, because we figured we had it. 
because we had our recognition, uh, recognition signals out and everything, and that wasn't doing any good. So they finally sent up a little uh, Ly Lysander uh, old pit plane, and he flew in amongst them trying to get them to stop. But that was, uh, that was a rememberable thing. Friendly fire. On August 16th, 2nd Canadian Division broke into Falaise. By August 17th, the blaze fell into Canadian hands. The best part of the German 7th Army is trapped. The Canadians have taken Falaise and the gap is almost closed. Inside the pocket, the enemy will be systematically destroyed. <laughs> 